Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to my home worm farming channel. If you are looking for a friendly, helpful community, you are in the right place. Um, I seem to have a bug problem. Looks like I've got moths from the um, worm chow, and there's also a lot of gnats. So, first things first, let me get one of my gnat traps. They're DIY, they're easy, they're basically free. Let me go get that. All right, I will link to the video where I made this, but all it is is a Coke bottle. You cut off the top, put it inside like a funnel, and then on the inside, you basically fill it a quarter of the way with water, with one little speck of dish soap, and the rest of the way so that there is air. You don't want to block this. This is where the uh, flies get in. And then fill it up the rest of the way with apple cider vinegar or leftover wine, fruit juice, whatever. The gnats will be attracted to it, and I don't know if you can see in there right now, but I've had this out on the counter and it is doing a really good job. And when we're done for the day, I'm gonna put this inside the worm bin to get rid of all these gnats. Last time we looked in on the African night crawlers was about four weeks ago. We fed eggplant, grapes, orange, uh, and some paper towel. Um, nothing's been shredded up as far as the paper goes. This is all hand shredded by me. You know, just to show that even if you don't have a shredder, you can be successful. Topic today is going to be getting it right. Although there is a lot of great worm books, there really is no substitute for experience. Honestly, I do have the Amazon links below to the books that I've read. It's a good foundation, but what you really need is time and experience. That is the reason why I have so many different kinds of bins and different kinds of worms. I'm trying to figure out how I can be successful in whatever situation I have in front of me, and hopefully that will help you as well. The difference between a bag system like this that's fabric, worm tower, which is a vertical tower of little trays, or if you're looking at my big, huge blue barrels, they all work completely differently. So that's where the experience comes in. Trial and error, success and failure, it's a learning process. Comment below where you learned how to worm farm and you know what path did you take to learning what you're doing. Also let me know what topics you would like to cover in the future and I will try and wedge those in. There is a lot of gnats and I do not know why because all of the food I put in here was frozen. So I don't know if it came in on the cardboard or what the story is. Nothing smells bad like you would expect if things were rotting actively. But what I have here is more gnats than I have probably ever seen in the history of my worm farming. So I don't know what I did wrong. But again, this is experience. Look at the size of this isopod. Look, look at this guy. That's a big one. Good boy. All right, so let's look around in here and see what the African night crawlers are doing. Never mind all the darn gnats. So that, that's a little disturbing with all the gnats and especially the moths. Um, this is the same room with my closet, so not a big fan of that. Hopefully this kind of moth is not the kind that eats clothing. I think it's a moth that's related to corn because that's one of the ingredients in my worm chow. Didn't freeze the worm chow and I'm starting to think maybe I should. All right, so we're doing good here. I am going to dig a little bit just to see if the moisture's stable all the way through and it does look like it is. So that's good. My practices of trying to keep the moisture in this bin have been successful this winter. And honestly, that's one of the things that I try to preach is that experience. Experience, like some of the paper Amazon tape is compostable, but the strings are not. All right, I'm gonna take those strings out. This is either a stem from a cabbage or a Brussels sprout, I'm not sure. They've been in here since probably July. They're gonna take a while. I just keep breaking them up a little bit and the worms will eventually get to it. 
helps keep things fluffy. If you have big chunks in here, then you don't get, you know, as big of a problem with things um, compacting. But everything looks like it's doing good here. So I'm going to take this dry paper and use that as the base for my meal that I'm going to be feeding them today. There's a little bit too much for it to uh, be a good base. I don't want it to build up that high. So we're going to move that over to one edge and we're going to make sure that all of the old stuff, I didn't see any of the food left over. I think maybe some of those seeds might have been those little uh, squashes I put in there. But other than that, I think everything is gone. So they're ready for another good feeding. First off, uh, we're gonna start with the ye old people food. Now this just turns into, well, rice, chickpeas, some squash, um, lemongrass for tea. So not a lot of big chunks of people food today, tea bags. But what I do have is another blender full of eggshell and orange peels. So we have been eating a lot of eggs lately and it's hard to always get around to drying them and putting them in the microwave, etc. So this is one of the ways that I kind of cheat. I do let them dry out, but uh, honestly, it's easier to mush them up in a blender. So this is mostly eggshell. I think there's some maybe black beans. Give them a little bit of uh, worm chow on the top. This is the powdered kind, so in theory this should not have any moth eggs or anything. So when I was talking about getting things right, for me, for this particular system, the getting it right is the moisture. For a bag system that's made out of fabric, it's all about the moisture for this one. That's the constant fight, is to make sure that everything stays wet enough to keep the worms healthy, and also so that the items I put in here break down. You know, and, and honestly, the get it right part is not just with worms and systems, it's also about seasons. And oftentimes I have a big difference between the temperature in my house uh, in the winter time, which is about 60, to during the summertime, which is about 70. And the worms in here, it didn't get cold enough that I needed to put a uh, heat pad in here this year, but uh, most of the time that's what I do if I can't keep the African night crawlers warm enough because they will not be successful no matter what you feed them if they are cold. All right, well, let's get some water on this system. So this little cap thing is in my Amazon links. You get a handful of them in a bag and they fit on basically anything. Now, even though the moisture was not terrible, I am gonna try and give them almost a gallon to make sure that this bottom cardboard is getting to an edible. Oops, dang it. Getting so that it's edible. The African night crawlers do love their, their carbon. And unfortunately, if it's not wet, they cannot get at it. The uh, other critters in the bin need it to be moist as well. So hopefully this will get things started. But the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna put that gnat trap in and that will catch any flying bug that is in here. So that goes right in the middle here. And I don't know if you noticed when I was taking things apart when I was opening the bin, but there's a hole in the little blanket. So here's the plastic that goes over the top of everything. And that way the worms don't crawl up here and get in my little fly trap. But the flies will make their way up here and they'll end up in there and they can be disposed of the next time I get into the bin. But I do wanna add a little bit more bedding on the top. So I usually try with the, uh, the bedding that's in process, keep that nice and wet. And then I put the dry stuff on top. So it can gather up the extra moisture, but also get a little bit of mold on it, get worked on a little bit by whatever springtails or whatever are in the bin. So this is the egg cartons. Most of the other bins I have, I put the paper through a shredder, so this is a good opportunity to get 
my paper in my house that's not gonna fit in a shredder. Okay, just a little bit more water to get this stuff started. Okay, that cap is, if you bump into it, it falls off, which you have observed me doing twice now. A little bit of that, in goes the cap. Make sure that is on the outside. Make sure it goes together. And then that is it for the update today with the African Nightcrawlers and trying to help you understand how I have gotten it right in the past. All right, well, if there is a link to a video that YouTube thinks you're gonna like right over there, and if you wanna see more about the Vermi Bag or the African Nightcrawlers, there's a playlist right over there. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.